Hello, welcome to Easy Update. I am joined by Roy and Dylan, the writer and creator, right? Programmer? Yeah. Uh, list all your whatevers. I, I'm just the uh, the lead developer, I guess, in this case. Lead developer of Gloomwood, the, the demo taking the world by storm right now. Uh, I love it. Huber loves it. You should all play it, and you will love it. Uh... I don't know. Let's talk about Gloomwood. What? What? You guys have been working on it for a while, yeah. Yeah. So, um, actually, Roy and I were co in college when I was like starting to mess with like the project files and stuff, and uh, we we worked on a couple other projects, and um, most of them fell through because I was really I was just starting to learn how to make games and. Uh, you know, this is kind of what happens when you're like learning how to do something. Everything just falls apart. <laughs> um, but over the years, I kept like uh, coming back to the game and like remaking it. And I don't know, there was something there that I was like, "Oh, I really want this to exist," um, but I just have to keep working at my skills before I can realize it. Um, and yeah, now we're at the point where it's like it's an established game. It's being published by New Blood. Um, it's like actually a thing uh, and that's crazy um, I, it's really I remember, exciting I remember even Gloomwood was like that um, uh, was uh, defined by that like ludicrous overreach that we had for all the other game projects early on because because we like neither of us understood anything about like how difficult and things were to implement on yes. you know, a game level and like you understood a little bit more than I did but we would we would toss out these ideas like oh yeah and then like we should have like a like a, a painting that shoots out evil evil bats but then as you use it more like the the city becomes more and more full of these carnivorous bats over time <laughs> which is like a I, I still think it's a cool idea that's a sweet idea so, yeah deeply impractical <laughs> i i would say i wish i could say that i've learned my lesson from that but if if um teaming up with new blood has taught me anything it's that uh no i just joined a, another group of people who are really critically bad at that where it's just <laughs> like you know what would be really cool and also it would take several months to do let's do it <laughs> Yeah, how hands-on is New Blood? Like, I, I was unsure if they were helping develop or if they're just a publisher, or... Yeah, so this is always a little... Uh, this this is confusing to everyone who knows about Blue, uh, New Blood. But um, they're, they're sort of like a publisher slash developer house. So um, we have a lot of developers that are kind of, like, under the New Blood fold. Yeah. And uh, we're all pretty, like, integrated and talk to each other and, and uh, like, help each other on our projects. Um, in terms of like Gloomwood, uh, Dave Oshry and David Szymanski are like the other two. They're working on the game, so we'll, like we'll have we'll have meetings and go over the build. And Dave will like have his crits, and David will help like kind of steer the game in the right direction. So it is pretty hands on when you're when you're working with New Blood. It's it's very much not like a. Uh, Oh, you know, we'll publish the game. You just make it, and uh, right. we'll see you in like two years or whatever. They 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 very much want to ensure that the game is as good as as the the new blood kind of moniker. Can yeah, and, and all of all the new game all the new blood games kind of have a similar vibe. Yes. Not not that they're all the same g kind of game, even, but like that kind of like low poly sort of vibe, except for that space. Unfortunate spaceman. Unfortunate yeah. spaceman looks looks a little different, but the the rest of them all look kind of like yeah, like the I don't know quake or blood vibe kind of like OG. Anyway, yeah. Um, Dave, pretty much like uh, I, I can't remember if New Blood started right after Rise of the Triad twenty thirteen, the, like the remake. Yeah, but um, it it pretty much was built into the uh like retro game niche pretty quickly um especially once like dusk and a medieval kind of signed on yeah well and i played i played a good amount of dusk i like that game too i like i like new blood's whole vibe they're just kind of like irreverent but funny all their silly uh urls <laughs> that redirect yeah, we're, urls we're wacky dave is a character 
uh, Roy, so you wrote, you're writing this? What's the deal? Explain what, explain. Uh, well, like Dylan mentioned, uh, uh, this project kind of started when we were both in college, which is a, a horrifying six years ago now. Um, <laughs> you still, you still got many years ahead of you, Roy. I don't know. Well, not if the, well, not if the world ends. 2020, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, I, my, like, six years is a, a long time to work on anything, and um, as is usually the case with, like, writing for video games, um, my, my, like, work happens a lot quicker than the development stuff, uh, yeah. and is also, like, uh, I don't, it doesn't matter as, as much to, it's not that it doesn't matter, but that it, 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 it is, um, like it can change more easily uh, than uh, a lot of the like hard implementation. Video game or, writing is worthless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically. <laughs> um, so uh, I've been like more and less involved over time. Um, some like I've had periods where I was working uh, for like many hours uh, on the game with Dylan and like very hands on. Um, I've. Uh, been through periods where I essentially like Dylan sends me a demo every couple months and I'm like, this looks cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm into this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know where, which I think right now we're in one of the, the lesser periods. Um, uh, I don't know what I can say, but there might be more writing requirements uh, for the game soon. So I might be picking up some more time in in gloomwood very cool yeah, we're, we're kind of um now that the the demo's out and people are are playing it uh, and we're you know we're getting a lot of this feedback and seeing kind of like what are the areas that need to be worked on and such like that we're kind of moving from from like uh working on that demo and all that to to building out the main game spaces and um everything that's going to be we're going to be doing like uh early access for gloomwood because oh, we do cool. that for uh all the new blood projects it's it's uh it's just a really good way to keep keep our thumb on the scale and and, and see like what what the fans kind of like about the game what are elements that we need to improve about it so you know we don't hit launch day and it's suddenly like oh this mechanic sucks like <laughs> um so uh, yeah, it, I, as uh, as we change like development cycles, the requirements that we need um, changes, and that's like sometimes like we'll get Roy in uh, to help. You know, like oh, we have this writing problem that's really hard to solve. Um, we need someone to help fix it. Uh -huh. um, and then Are other times it's just like production. Right. Are you able to say, because right now on Steam it says soon TM, uh, are you able to speak to how far into the development process you are, or is that under wraps? Um, it's still, that's still, we haven't announced anything. Uh, it's still pretty early, but um, we're hoping that by the end of this, by the end of this year, we have a pretty, we'll be able to at least announce like an early access date. Um, I'm, I'm sure Dave will have a lot more to, to say about that. He's usually the one that runs uh, runs the timelines and announcements and such. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, I'm only asking for selfish reasons, just because I want to play. <laughs> I want to play yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I should say, I should mention that uh, Roy and I are, are friends, and I had a really weird moment where I was I was looking at the Gloomwood website. I don't even remember why. It was after I'd played the demo. It was like a week after, and I just like felt like looking at the website i don't, I don't know mm -hmm. it was very strange and i scroll down and i see roy graham there and i'm like huh that's a funny coincidence but i moused over it and the twitter handle was i was like well that's his discord hand what the hell and i clicked on it and i'm like well that's roy yeah <laughs> and i'm like why did yeah. he never tell me this <laughs> roy uh because roy and i share a friend in Jack who has shown up on Easy Update a couple of times uh, but uh, we've known each other for I don't know two or three years now probably uh, but you went away to fancy ass east coast so I haven't seen you in a while but uh, yes the 
the elitist bastion of Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eating all your clams? What is it? Philly cheesesteak? No, what do you yeah, got over there? Cheesesteak. That's <laughs> Phil- cheese Philly's there. famous clams. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Dylan, as you can tell, my interview style is poor. But, oh, that's uh, that's fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm enjoying this greatly. Good. Uh, so talk about some inspirations for the game, because I mean, this is this pretty much hits very squarely, and I mean, Roy, you can you can attest to this. Like this hits pretty squarely in my uh, you know crosshairs of interest. Weird fiction, Victorian, Gothic horror is just like, yep, yeah. you checked every box. <laughs> what are some uh, inspirations for both of you guys? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Roy? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of, like, inspirations, both from, like, a literary sense and from, like, a game history sense. So, obviously, from, from a game history sense... Uh, the, the closest one that people tend to connect and that we kind of leaned into was Thief. Yeah. Um, Thief the Dark Project, Thief 2 the Metal Age. Um, uh, and uh, kind of like the Looking Glass games in general. Uh, so like Thief, System Shock, um, Deus Ex, the immersive sim kind of legacy. Uh, that's That's kind of like where a lot of my design ethos kind of developed out of uh, my love for for the immersive sim genre um but i also have a a a lot of love for like survival horror um especially weird janky survival horror so i've got a lot of love for like uh the first condemned game oh yeah um, uh which is where the 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 like ammo checking system in gloomwood comes from Mm. um and then uh uh Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, which is another really janky game that a lot of people don't really know about. I know of Call um, of Cthulhu, but not not the Dark Corners of the Earth. Part. Yes, that that is a <laughs> that, is, that is a much older, um, much older game, and that's uh, the mechanic in Gloomwood where, where when you're like your legs broken and you just hear the like yeah. bone cracking. That's it's basically we took that from Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. Um, uh, so yeah, a lot of a lot. Of, basically, it's like a hybrid of like immersive sims and survival horror. And of course, you've got the like the phonographs are basically the typewriters from Resident Evil. Yeah. Um, when I loved like, the one thing I loved that you kind of discovered throughout the demo, and I don't want to spoil too much of the demo for people because they can go out and play it right now. But like, how you can basically like Dark Souls shortcuts. Like yes, the the first the first phonograph gramophone whatever uh becomes the third one you know when you get back around to it it's like okay this makes more sense to use the original save point than the second one uh unlocking paths and stuff i love that kind of stuff yes um that's that's uh, another kind of thing uh, definitely dark souls is is, is uh another like uh, is a thing that it gets brought up a lot and i love the souls games uh, i love bloodborne roy has heard heard me talk way too much about those games because i mean bloodborne's my favorite game with yeah. symphony of the night probably um but that's also a very like survival horror thing is like oh, oh you opened up another route back to the typewriter and now you can yeah. just you can take a shortcut back um I, I think it's worth mentioning here also just that dylan is uh dylan got his like start in game dev doing map editing and uh like map mods um for uh in like source and stuff. Uh, yes. So I I think it reads pretty clearly in the demo that it's like this is like a lo- a long long skill he has he has developed over time. <laughs> yeah, before I was like a coder or like a modeler or anything, I was a map maker. Um I, I used to make maps for like Portal and Half-Life and TF2 and stuff. Um Yo. so those are all like my old kind of the, those are where my my brush making skills came from I, uh, just years of making maps I make levels with the Portal 2 uh, puzzle making thing I mean obviously a way more simplistic yeah. tool than what you're talking about but it's fun yeah. <laughs> when I was making maps for Portal uh, and Portal 2 that that ha- that didn't exist yet uh, we still had to use basically the same tools that Valve used to yeah. make the game 
Well, that's that that shines through, like Roy said, because one of my one of my favorite things about the demo, besides like things looping back onto itself, because I mean like, that's like just one of my favorite things. But uh, I really appreciated the level design because you very clearly have like, okay, here's this gate, and you can see down like, oh, here's the docks, you know, and then you've got the door with the force field in front of it, and you're like, okay, I have a goal, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it all felt very organic and like you discovered it like the sense of discovery uh and paired with like almost a labyrinthian kind of feel but you never got lost you know i don't know it's just very well done and uh, it showcased well in a demo because it was like kind of a limited area that upgraded to three mm-hmm. other areas you know this is very cool what happened uh in the presentation because they left Gloomwood out, and then there were rumors that they, like, got a hold <laughs> yeah. of you, and then you put uh, it in later, or was it always planned to be at the end? Or? No, it wasn't always planned to be at the end. It was... It was <laughs> that was wild. Um, so... <laughs> I mean, not trying to get you, anybody in trouble. No, no, no. Um, and all of this was a, a complete accident. There was no... Uh, th- this wasn't anything intentional. It was just a slip-up. Um so uh, we had a a segment in the PC gaming show, and uh, what was supposed to run was uh, the New Blood Supercut, which was all of our games except for Gloomwood, um, and uh, then it was going to be the Gloomwood reveal trailer, and then the end was going to be Dave talking a little bit, which is when he gives out all the URLs. But yeah. the way it ended up being was it was the New Blood Supercut, then it just went right to Dave talking, and yeah, the the Gloomwood reveal trailer was somehow dropped. Uh, and when that happened, we were like, "Oh no, this is bad! What happened to our reveal trailer?" Um, so then Dave contacted them and was like, "Hey, our trailer is not there." Um, and then yeah, it was kind of like an emergency, like, "Oh, what do we do? How do we fix this?" Because it's a uh, that that you can't really. You can't stop a show like that. It's yeah. like all pre-recorded. Um, so uh, then the idea was PC gaming. PC gamer was like, okay, well maybe we'll put it right at the end. Um, and uh, this happened to coincide directly with a dumb long-term long-term rumor that Bloodborne would come to PC eventually. Uh, <laughs> yes, and of I course, heard that, yeah. Of course, when PC Gamer was like, they didn't want to just say like, oh, you know, we've got one more indie trailer right at the end because then no one would show up, like everyone would yeah. just check out. Um, of course, everyone thought like, oh, it's going to be the Bloodborne trailer. So I pretty much was <laughs> like, everyone who's waiting for the Bloodborne trailer is about to get a really bad, like, we have Bloodborne at home moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, so we we didn't plan that. I... I didn't want it to happen like that, um, and unfortunately, the on top of it, the because they had to just run like raw footage that didn't have like any time to render out properly. Like it was also very like low FPS and glitchy and stuff. It, it no one wanted it to happen like that. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, try and fool the whole gaming community into ruining my own reveal. <laughs> Like, well, yeah, that that sounds like a very stressful couple of hours. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a very stressful day. Um, but uh, like I said, it was an accident. Um, I don't have like any, I don't have any ill will about yeah, it. Sure, we had a, sure. we had a lot of people who like, like, oh, this happened. Let's like stream the game and such. So we we got a lot of press out of it too. So it wasn't well, it wasn't, as, wasn't that bad. And it, it seems to me that the demo is doing well being picked up and played by a good number of people yeah yes yes so that's awesome and we got demon souls remaster like a couple days Mm -hmm. later which kind (laughs) of for me personally like put salve on the wound of not getting bloodborne (laughs) pc i'm like okay i'll take i'll take a demon souls reimagining for ps5 yes please and, and it's funny because I would I would love Bloodborne on PC too. So yeah. it's just kind of like, yeah, I wish it was the Bloodborne on PC announcement too. <laughs> well, but it's yeah, funny that's because that's what we wish we were working on also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is funny that Gloomwood is like 
adjacent uh, thematically yes. to Bloodborne, and it's on PC, so it's like kind of <laughs> yeah it, it was uh it was a very weird and funny we we have a an internal joke and i'm sure most people who are like deeply familiar with the immersive sim genre know that like it's kind of a cursed genre it's yeah. because it's it's just kind of like every studio that ends up making immersive sims ends up like out of business at some point <laughs> except for arcane arcane's like the only one that's like survived for yeah it was touch and go for a minute wasn't but it, it for them i don't know yeah. yeah, 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 and they definitely had their hard times too, but they, um, they're they doing pretty well now. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of like, we're going to chalk it all up to the immersive sim curse anytime something bad happens. Well, it's just it's just staying true to the name because like any, any truly immersive sim of reality will end in terrible failure and destruction. Yeah, so. especially in 2020. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would you count... Cyberpunk 2077 is an immersive sim. People who played it have compared it to Deus Ex, like, on crack. I, I, I guess. I honestly haven't... Um, I, I can't really know uh, if it does that for me, like, until I play a game. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, like, ask me, like, oh, do you think, like, this game's an immersive sim and stuff? And one, I'm not really the arbiter to determine if a yes, game is an immersive are. sim. Yes, you are. <laughs> it has zero four five one. It must be, um, <laughs> but uh, no. It, it like for me, an immersive sim kind of uh, expresses a very specific ty- style of play. Um, it's it's very kind of like open, and I get to kind of choose how I want to play the game. Um, and it's all it's very like expressive. Like all the the tools and the mechanics feel like they fit into the game world very well. It's not just like oh, you know we're if we have another RPG skill tree right. for this game, even though like we we've, we've made a hundred games that also have the exact same tree. It, like for Thief, uh, all your tools are tools that like a thief would have. Um, so uh, yeah, I can't really tell until I play a game, and it's like oh yeah, like all these mechanics feel g- give me the sense that I'm playing the character that I'm inhabiting. Yeah. I heard a thing, uh, maybe from Alana Pierce's video about it or something, but, like, the HUD only contains items that you've added a body mod for. So, like, you don't have an ammo readout unless you install the thing in your eye that gives you an ammo readout. And It's very, like, uh, System Shock 1. Yeah. A lot of stuff in there sounds pretty cool. But anyway, Roy, it looked like you wanted to say something, like, ten minutes ago. Oh, I was just going to answer the inspiration question, which yeah. we've moved on. No, I want to, I want to hear your inspirations, Roy, because I want to learn new things I should read. <laughs> um, Although we may have read uh, all the same stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, as as Ian mentioned, I'm I, uh, I definitely have my background in uh, literature, sort of first. Um, that's like the writing discipline that I do mostly when I'm not working on games um, and uh, where like a lot of my um, a lot of my creative inspiration e4 games comes from um, uh, right now I'm reading like the Gormenghast novels which uh, are uh, a sort of fantastic uh, touch point for Gloomwood as they are like mm-hmm. gothic like uh uh, like gothic uh, dramas of manners in this weird way. Um, definitely Sounds qualifies as weird fiction, cool. which we also mentioned <laughs> uh, yeah. earlier. Um, but yeah, so like obviously there's a huge well of weird fiction and gothic horror to draw from for Glimwood. Um, uh, I think the thing that would maybe surprise people is uh, that when Dylan and I were originally talking about like narrative touch points, uh, one of the things we went to was um, Spirited Away. Huh. Uh, and and this sense of uh, sort of landing in a, uh, a a land where you don't know the rules um, and uh, survival sort of depends on uh, figuring out how things uh, how unfamiliar things work. Yep, that's uh, still it. Still holds pretty true too. Yeah, I was gonna say that that still fits pretty well. Yeah. Um. Well, like I said, I don't want to, and I, I I was thinking of doing B-roll over this, but now I think, like, it's probably better to just have people play it, so I'll just put, like, the trailer toward the beginning so people know what the game looks like for a point of reference, and I encourage you to go play Gloomwood. Uh, is there anything else that you guys would want to touch on? Or we can just chat about whatever. 
Go on. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, for uh, the other half, like I, I talked a little bit about games, Roy just talked a little bit more about literature. Um, same kind of like for me, all the literature that I that I kind of embed into it is is kind of like the hallmark ones that like Frankenstein, Dracula, uh, just the. I wanted to take like that weird kind of uh, that element of Thief, where like it it doesn't quite feel like a medieval game entirely because it's got this weird technology spin to it, and yeah. kind of do that to the Victorian era as well, because. Uh, there's a lot of like weird ideas of like oh yeah reanimating things through like electricity and stuff that that I think is really fascinating and gothic horror yeah um, that I want to like sort of bring back when um, there was that and, like love affair with the mystery of of the scientific at the time yes, where it's like yes. we don't really know how far we can push this stuff like <laughs> what what's possible what's not possible yeah I love that uh, here's a question for for both of you maybe Roy you can hit it first. Why aren't there very many... Like, why is it so hard to make a good cosmic horror movie? Um, well, a, a huge reason for that, um, I would venture to say the main reason for that, and, and the reason why cosmic horror is always sort of a... like a literary genre first before it's anything else, and I, I would argue most successfully, um, is co because cosmic horror is sort of fundamentally about encountering forces... Um, beyond uh, human understanding, um, and uh, w when you read, when you go back to like Lovecraft and Al Algernon Blackwood and stuff like that, um, a lot of the descriptions of the the sort of forces or entities that encounter are vague uh, and uh, contradictory. In <laughs> form of like it was too horrible to describe, or yeah. like my eyes couldn't comprehend what I was seeing. And even when you look at like modern cosmic horror, like Jeff Vandermeer, um, uh, you know that the the end of Annihilation, he describes sort of the frightful entity as being like three things simultaneously, uh, three things which can't really coexist. Right? It's like a door and a giant monster slug and like set a solar system rotating around. Itself. Right, and like blinding uh, light all at the same time. <laughs> Right, and, and you can kind of get away with that in literature in a way that you can't in a visual medium like film or a, a game. Yep. That's the That's correct a, answer, yeah. Um, there's <laughs> a similar thing uh, with horror in, in games uh, where, you know, sometimes people ask, like, oh, why is, why is, like, Silent Hill 1 still super scary, even though, like, it's all the enemies are, like, three polygons? <laughs> Um, and it, it's kind of the same thing where it's like, as soon as you start moving away from high fidelity, um, your brain kind of has to start making up the rest of the image. Um, and that, that kind of gets your imagination rolling. And now you're starting to imagine like you're seeing stuff that's way scarier than what you can really put on the screen. So uh, I think horror and cosmic horror are, they're, they're, um, they're really built upon you kind of scaring yourself yeah um, through your own imagination and that's why like it's difficult to pull off in a visual medium is that is that some of the thinking behind the lower poly look of gloomwood then or i mean it's definitely part of it uh it's also part of it is that you know we're an indie dev team and it's just much easier to make a low fidelity game but uh we definitely like n like kneel into that yeah uh quite a bit you know if we're gonna if we're gonna have to make a low poly game uh we we want to kind of let we want to like make enemies that were the silhouettes and the way that they move and such really emphasize like oh yeah this is this is something weird and eerie that i'm looking at well and and it has the i'm sure intended benefit of uh it like it feels like nostalgia but it's fresh and new and like runs at a good frame rate and you know like you have the added benefit of both you can you can have your cake and in and, and eat it too yeah. uh which i really appreciate you sort of you sort of preempted my my follow-up question and why i brought up cosmic horror movies um but maybe we can expand on it a little more uh or if both of you have different thoughts on this but like what what elements can you do you guys think that you or are you exploring and do you think that you can explore in games 
that maybe you can't in literature or a film uh, when it comes to gothic horror, cosmic horror kind of stuff, if anything? Um, I think that uh, because games is an interactive medium, um, you have the, the kind of unique perspective of you're not reading from another character's point of view. You're you're literally inhabiting it and you're you're getting the same kind of like fight or flight responses to like stimuli in the in the game. Um, you know, if you encounter something horrifying, uh, your options aren't you you can't just keep reading like you can in a paragraph or right. keep watching the movie. It's kind of like you have to you have to deal with it now. Um, and there's there's benefits and there's uh, there there's cons to to, to that uh, because games it can be very easy. You don't have control over the narrative and the pacing um, as you do in in literature and film. Yeah. Um. So it, that can kind of fall apart in places. But um, there's also a very unique element of you you yourself are kind of living through this experience. And and I would I would also add that like um, uh, for for all that the uh, you sort of lose out in terms of like narrative and pacing control um, in in games uh, uh, games give you the opportunity to actually. Um, experience uh, viscerally one of the most core uh, elements of cosmic horror, which is this notion that uh, the the universe is sort of this vast uncaring thing uh, that we that we're, you know, small specks in. Um, I get and, so happy uh, hearing people say that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, a, it, it like washes it's like, over my spirit, you know? <laughs> It's, it's this idea that, you know, the world turns without us and, and like, these great evils sort of destroy us without realizing we exist. And uh, in, in fiction and in film, you're always sort of telling, like, you're telling a story, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's anchored to a particular position. It's, it's almost harder to believe. Um, in a game like Gloomwood, where uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, sort of all on, on your cunning and 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 your wits uh, to survive or to die uh it sort of brings you face to face with that that uncaring disposition that is the the foundation of like cosmic horror and something something that i really appreciate uh in games that i i i felt was present even in the demo for for gloomwood is just kind of like story just kind of emerging from the environment and like the way things are and where things are and stuff like that um, speaking for your team, because I imagine it's different for for every game, and Roy, maybe you could speak to this in one regard and Dylan in another. But like, to what extent, Roy, have you had? Did you have impact on like storytelling, emergent storytelling in the world itself, like that? Like, to what extent did you say like, oh, like what if this building looked like that, or this this item was over here, or something, or is that all game design stuff in your team? Um, that like the stuff that you've played and and like uh, everything in the demo is pretty much exclusively Dylan and uh, Dave and David uh, sort of creating like pathways of, of play and and possibility spaces and things like that. Um, but uh, I mean, when when Dylan started this game. Um, one of his stipulations, and, and this isn't true anymore, um, but uh, the idea was that there would be no language, like there wouldn't be any words. Um, none of the characters could speak. There wouldn't be like um, like signs or notes or anything left around. Um, so everything had to, had to emerge, like all, all narrative had to emerge from gameplay and, and, and these, those sort of moments that you're describing. Mm. Um, that's like still important to Gloomwood, and I think a lot of like the like when we talk about larger story things, um, those emergent moments are important to us. The 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 you know when like lore can be revealed through like seeing something from a high point. Uh, mm. uh, 
uh, yeah. in the city that was like there all along rather than you know being sat down by a wizard or something oh by a wizard <laughs> for some reason you saying that makes me think of god was it pbs the chronicles of narnia show or something or bbc where they they walk through a maze at one point and then they go later like an episode later or something or later on into a tower and then they look down and they they notice that the maze spells out under me (laughs) it's like literally a word on the ground that they were walking through and they just couldn't see it Uh, that formative moment for me as a child (laughs) i would welcome that replacing like skeletons on the toilet or or like there is no god written in blood on the walls yeah (laughs) all video game narrative devices well yeah make make us work for it you know it's uh yeah it's really we we eventually had to give give up on that like no language idea for a bunch of different reasons um like uh and even now like we we do plan to add uh a type of of language that the guards use um, oh cool because uh yeah it, we started to butt up against like well this is also a stealth game and it turns out it's really hard to get the player to understand why guard has become suspicious if they don't have like a language that they say like if they're unable to be like oh i saw something over there or i heard something Uh, or like oh there's a body over here um the player doesn't understand why something was triggered and yeah it just kind of starts to fall apart so there's definitely instances where uh and i always tell people this when they like send like new blood pitches and stuff like putting something into into like the game and actually starting to like play around with it will expose the problems you have with your design on paper um because you'll have this like really idealized version of the game that you want to make and then the moment you put it into editor and you're playing with it you'll start to see like oh here's all the flaws that i didn't recognize would exist beforehand for sure yeah (sighs) well i'm excited for gloomwood i don't need to keep all your take up all your time forever uh but thank you both so much for chatting with me about it (laughs) of course Uh, yeah yeah yeah. uh so gloomwood will release in question marks costing question marks on pc right (laughs) yes um (laughs) we'll we'll be announcing that on you know the new blood accounts uh Dave will, will like meme out the announcement date at some point <laughs> because he's Dave. Um, I appreciate but, uh, it. I love it. If uh, if you do play the game uh, and you really enjoy it, wish listing really helps, um, and uh, it'll also immediately let you know any announcements that we make or when we enter early access and such. Oh wait, I forgot. I I th- I forgot about the door in the demo. Which, I don't, which door? Well, there's the, the coin door. The coin door. So I, I think, I think I was one coin short. Oh. Because I put in all my coins, and then I was like, "Well, shoot." <laughs> <laughs> there's always one coin that everyone misses. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's uh, it, there's a <laughs> there's a coin in a sack somewhere that everyone misses. Oh. Yes. Uh, there is a hint to it, but everyone misses it. <laughs> I'll have to go back and try to try to open it because it does open, right? Yes, it does. Oh, I love shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, Gloomwood looks sweet. I can't wait for it. I didn't know that one of my friends wrote the damn thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, it was such a bizarre moment. I like, I was like, what? Um, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, Roy, we gotta play Vermintide sometime again soon. Oh yeah, I'm down to kill some rats. Oh, yeah. I miss that game so bad. It's so good, dude. Goat boys are in there now. I haven't, I haven't fought the goat boys at all. Ugh, I don't know if you have to. If you were playing with me, it might just give it to you. I'm not sure. I, I'm down to buy some goat boys anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we should all get in. All four. If, <laughs> if we <laughs> add Jack, the four of us can can go kill some goat boys. Always down for Vermintide. It's such a good game. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> ah, 
Inside at last, are ya? Welcome. Welcome! <laughs> <laughs> 